and welcome to the Bottom Up Skills Podcast. I'm Mike Parsons, the CEO of Qualitance, and we are now in our second installment of this series where I highlight my favorite product strategy tools. And this one, we're going to use the full marketing funnel, sometimes called the growth marketing funnel. Um, It has all sorts of nicknames, but you get the gist. It's all about the marketing funnel done completely A to Z. Now, the reason that this matters so much is that traditional marketing is often obsessed with just the very top of the funnel, you know, sort of customer acquisition. So the key thing that traditional marketing is all about is reach and frequency, blasting the message to as many people as many times as possible. However, what we've seen the emergence of is a fully integrated uh, entire funnel approach, which has been really brought by this kind of movement around growth hacking, growth marketing. And what it does is it follows the whole user journey completely. And what it does is it focuses on the conversion between the steps. So not only are you looking big picture, very broad, but then you also go deep, which is what's so great about full marketing funnel as a tool is you get really into the nitty gritty of conversion, optimization, testing, and validation. So the reason this growth marketing funnel matters so much is it really helps you go way beyond traditional marketing to ensure that marketing is contributing to a healthy business really dives in and tackles the question of, is it cost effective the way we're acquiring customers? Right through to the viral coefficient, that is how many times your existing customers refer to new customers, how many times they share the experience and become your greatest advocates. So what at the heart of this is going to happen at the very heart of a growth marketing funnel will mean that marketing people not only get the customers in the door, but they can make a dramatic contribution to the very product itself. And I think this is enormously powerful because let's be honest, the marketing people and the product people haven't traditionally hung out uh, throughout the entire industrial age, it tends to be marketing, build the product, and they knock on the marketing door and said, hey, you better go launch this quickly. Go find me a customer for this problem, for this solution. So what I want you to do is imagine that this growth marketing funnel really steps up the game for marketing. This is how marketing can really contribute way beyond customers and actually really be a central hub of a thriving product, service, or business. Okay, I've set the bar pretty high, haven't I? Well, let's go through the six main parts of the funnel and then let's look at the sort of the thinking behind each. So uh, the funnel starts with three A's and ends with three R's. This is when you put it all together, it sounds like R and that's why it is sometimes called pirate metrics, which was a, a name famously given by Dave McCullough. Let's have a look at these three A's and then these three R's. At the very top of the funnel is awareness. How many people recall, know, are familiar with your name and brand? Then there's acquisition. That's actually having some meaningful direct interaction with them. Then you need to activate them, which is all about getting them activated in the door of your store, trialing, testing, experiencing some product or service. And then there's a question of revenue and retention, pretty self-explanatory. And one of the key ones, one of the most neglected ones is referral. How often they go out into the world and say, you must try this product. Okay. So awareness, acquisition, activation, top half of the funnel, retention, revenue, referral, bottom half of the funnel, we're in a good place. Okay. Let's look at the questions that fundamentally get to the essence of each of these steps. This is the question that leads to the source of improving your conversion rate. So awareness, what is the fundamental question here? How many people do we reach? Are we getting just, is the top of, is the funnel wide enough? How many people know us? How many times do we show up when we're indexed on Google against our given practice? Acquisition. How many people actually, let's use a website 
as an example, how many people actually come to our website? So if a gazillion people know about us, but our website traffic's really low, uh uh-oh, we got some improvement in acquisition to do. There you go. That's the model starting to work here. Let's go to activation. How many people take the first important step in the relationship with us? Um, Providing an email address right through to a trial or uh, a money back guarantee starter package, whatever it is. Now, if you're hugely famous, getting a ton of people to the website, but very few people are activating, there becomes your focus. Elegantly, simple, super clear, and really a great way to ask yourself, are we maximizing our opportunity? Then we kind of shift into the thinking, the the three R's, about are we taking full advantage of the customers that we're acquiring and the customers that we're activating? So first of all, it's like how many people are using our product a second or third time? I mean, this is key. And a lot of startups might do a great job at the top of that funnel. A lot of enterprises could be the same here, but actually very few actually become very active ongoing customers. You know, you look at the classic uh, example of this is uh, you work really hard to get people to download your native mobile app from, let's say, the iOS app store. You use it once and then within a couple of months, it hasn't been used and gets deleted. This is a very common paradigm in actually the native app universe that after 30 days, app usage decline uh, to essentially a dozen or so key apps and beyond that, people are not using very much at all. So are you retaining your customers? Are they staying active? Then there's the big chestnut. How many people stop paying and how much do they pay? There's all sorts of great acronyms you can use here, uh, cost per customer, revenue per customer, revenue per user. I mean, it, there's a lot um, here. Key thing here is you could have a lot of customers using the free version of your product, but you're actually getting very few into revenue. Or you might have people locked in revenue, but the revenue is not growing uh, as, a, as a gross amount. If you look at it on a per individual amount, you might have delivered one valuable feature, product, or service to a customer, but it may have, let's say it's 10 uh, 10 euros a month, but maybe it's been 10 euros a month for weeks, months, maybe years. That's the point you say, hey, don't we need to like, you know, increase our revenue per user? Don't we need to like try getting them to upsell, cross-sell? And lastly, this is the final R. So the other two R's, retention and revenue. Now we get to referral. And referral is all about your viral coefficient. The best companies on the planet take Revolut. You're probably seeing them close to for every customer they acquire. Those customers acquire, refer, and advocate to another customer. So Six big concepts, awareness, acquisition, and activation at the top of the full marketing funnel, retention, revenue, and referral at the bottom half of the funnel. If you focus on maximizing your conversion rates between all of these steps, you'll have a great thriving business. You'll be on your way to some really good times and viability. Now, if you want to learn not only about viability, feasibility, or making your product extremely desirable, you can go to bottomup.io and you'll find everything you need as a product person, whether it's free courses on lean, design thinking, agile, so much. We've made it all open source, so jump in to bottomup.io. You'll get everything you need to build a great product. All right, that's it for the Bottom Up Skills podcast. That's a wrap. 